Hello, Mr. Craig Burley. How are you? Hello, Kojo. I'm doing very well, thank you. It is Good. so beautiful out today. Yeah, yeah. A great, a great Sunday, and uh, I think uh, uh, for those those that are outside, those that are inside, wherever you are, we are glad that you joined us to uh, listen to a discussion around uh, freedom of speech. So. Um, yeah, this is this is the communal. Uh, this is our fourth episode. Um, if you missed the first three episodes, you can check out my uh, my YouTube page, or you can go to my Facebook page, uh, Kojo Easy Damte, and uh, and you can watch uh, those episodes. Our second episode, we had uh, Dr. Mio Joseph, and we talked about white supremacy um critical race theory and uh, and woke wokeness um that was an interesting discussion uh and then our our last episode we spoke to Harun uh, Ali uh running he's, he's running to become the youngest city council city councilor in uh in Edmonton Alberta has their municipal elections this year in October so uh, we we spoke to Haroon just to get a sense of what are some of the challenges that Edmonton is is uh, facing and and how uh, racialized young uh, folks can uh, can be involved in uh, in politics. So uh, those are the episodes, and now we get to speak with uh, Craig about freedom of speech. So um, yes, can you? Welcome, first of all, to the Thank communal. You very much. Uh, uh, and the, I love the name. <laughs> I, lo I love the name of the so of the show of the series. It's yeah. terrific because it represents so much of what's truly important to me. Right? Yeah, is, is togetherness and community. So. Yeah, we we you know we huddle up, we have conversations, we make connections, and we just want to build community. So we that's yeah, that's it. So you know um can you can you give us you know uh, a a definition of what freedom of speech is and and how is integrated into the constitution or the legal uh the legal frameworks of how we talk about laws in uh in canada because there's really two senses two very important senses in which we use this concept of freedom of speech and one is legal and in canadian terms it's quite new um freedom of speech was a has only really been a protected valuing other than in a very limited way at the federal level since 1982 um, which was the adoption of the charter and freedoms and for freedom of expression, as the Charter puts it, it is, it is a very, very important value within the Charter, right? And, and, and this is all on the legal side, right? I'll, I'll get in a minute what I think is the more important aspect of freedom of speech. But on the legal side, um, there are four, four values that the Charter puts as what it calls fundamental freedoms. And those fundamental freedoms, freedom of conscience and religion, freedom of thought, opinion, and expression, interesting how thought and belief, right? Um, thought and belief, most mental states and attitudes, are opinion and expression, the bringing of those, right, to the public, bearing of that. That includes, for the church purposes, freedom of press and of other media of communication, including, you know, the... Uh, including including the internet, including radio and television, including uh, many other things. But, you know, those freedoms are certain. The other one, peaceful assembly and freedom of association. And those fundamental freedoms are very important. Um, but as we're discovering now in Ontario, for example, um, they still can be, you know, carved out against the government by the use of this notwithstanding clause. The notwithstanding clause, even though these freedoms are fundamental, the notwithstanding clause allows the government to go beyond um, what would otherwise, you know, not be permitted, 
uh, in order to circumscribe it. And we'll get to one of those examples, uh, possibly a little bit later, these new laws here in Ontario to, you know, prohibit, um, but I mean, essentially the, the government says that they're to prevent, um, you know, unions from speaking freely in the election. Um, so, you know, that's the legal side. Like legally, we protect expression and that includes protecting the right to hear people, right? The right to receive those communications. And they are limited. All constitutional rights and freedoms in this country are limited by Section 1, right? Which says that, you know, everything in the Constitution, um, with certain very limited exceptions, is subject to, you know, reasonable limits that are justified in a free and democratic society. There's always these backstops. And we have the backstops in order to, you know, protect these conflicts of rights, for the most part, right? Where um, one person's right to free expression is, for example, you know, runs up against another party's right not to be defamed, for example. Um, and there's all kinds of laws that we have that, that prohibit expression. Um, you can't, you know, you can't sell breakfast cereal without there being English and French on the package. Um, you know, that's a very basic expression, what I write on a cereal packet. But, you know, those are subject to reasonable limits. Um, you know, nutritional information on the same package, same thing. Um, and, you know, defamation is a classic example. Uh, you know, advertising is another example. Fraud is another example. Allow people, um, for example, to sell uh, you know, securities to sell, you know, shares, stocks and bonds without uh, adequately disclosing so about them. And you can't, you, you can't lie out, for example, the rents you're going to generate. Um, all these things are subject to limits. So mm -hmm. freedom of speech and expression is always very delicate that way. There are a lot of competing values that come to the fore in considering these things. And that's just the legal side. On the, the more basic side, freedom of expression is about one ability to, you know, sing the words that are written on one's heart. And, mm -hmm. and from that point of view, there are a huge number of social That prevent people from speaking freely. There are a whole number of um, you know counter Oh, Craig, I think, oh, we're losing you. Craig? <laughs> oh, no. Craig? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Craig, it looks like your, inter your internet is... Uh, is the cause of uh, of not hearing you? Can you hear us, Craig? <laughs> your your internet. You are having some connectivity issues. Can you can you hear? here in the city of Hamilton with, you know, the Sir John A. Macdonald statue, right? Okay, and, yeah, it's much um, better now. Go ahead. There was a test 
uh, to cover up at you with cloth and uh, red coal in order to make up about Donald's commission side and had, you know, made agreements with the aim of giving them. I'm moving, okay? Yeah, you're... you're yeah, move here. Okay. I'm going to move here. Okay. <laughs> I can hear you. I'm moving. I'm so sorry about that. Yes. I can hear you fine, yeah. I'm so sorry about that. It's okay. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Technology is our enemy. I'm glad. Okay, I think I think we're good. <laughs> I, I think. Uh, but what I was saying, yeah. that not only this, not only freedom of expression, it's also on our hearts, right? Limits we place on ourselves and limits that others place on us, right? Yep, am I? What I'm going to try and hear for me to do this from do here is put it in the hang on here. Okay, now nah, there we go. Um. You know, we see when we think about um, we see the limit, the consequences that might flow socially, economically, and otherwise from saying what's on our mind, right? And there's no question that some of those limits make sense from our personal point of view because we don't want to hurt people, right? Um, I don't necessarily want to say what's on my, I don't necessarily want to say what's on my mind um, because I don't want to hurt someone else with my words, right? Those are sensible limits, right? There are other times when other people want to limit what you have to say, and certainly nobody would dream of saying what's on their mind all the time, for example, at their job. Yeah, so... So let me let me. <laughs> so when we talk, you you talked about limits, but yeah. I think sometimes what what happens is, you know, these the idea of freedom of expression or freedom of speech is not applied equally, or not applied in a in a moralistic way, right? So you can have a you can have a prime minister of Canada say that a group of people are savages, right? Mm -hmm. Which is an ignorant and racist thing to say, yes. right? But we then say, hey, freedom of speech, anybody can say anything. However, there are yeah. some people too that will be like, okay, we want a new political order. Whether it's socialist, communist, whatever it might be, and then a group of people will be like, "No, you don't want to. We, we we don't want our country like that. We, these are not things we aspire to." So then, who who who? How 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 are we applying these things in a way that is uh, 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 ethically and moralistically, uh, uh, um, you know, understandable for people? That's right. You need always to look at power and power relations. Speech is what speech is something we do, right? Speech is a, an act that we take in the world. And when we look at people's ability to act and people's ability to take action, including to speak, right? We need to look at power, right? Power is fundamental to all of these relationships. It's very easy not only for people with power to speak, but to be heard, right? And to be taken as an speaking importantly, right? And for people without power, that same ability is very circumscribed. And in addition, right, people do face constantly consequences for their speech. Right. So you need to look when you're looking at what does it mean to be free? Right. That means what does it mean to be able to act? And for somebody who does hold power or who's proximate to power, 
right, who has the privilege of being proximate to power, it's very easy to speak. Uh -huh. right? For people without that proximity to power, for people who are oppressed and who lack privilege, <laughs> the same is extraordinarily difficult. And I think, and I've always felt, that we need as a society to make sure that we are able to hear them, right? One of the things about freedom of speech is that freedom, right, to hear, that freedom to listen. And we need as a society to protect that value. That's the one that needs to be paramount. But what in fact we do is protect, right, the freedom of speech for those who have the resources, right, to put behind it. And those are the expressions that we seek to protect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is the so, inverse. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how do you then, how do you see the discussion fitting in with the statue, right? If, if we are, you know, from a legalistic point of view, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not the lawyer, you are the lawyer, right? Um, we have treaties in, in we have treaties right yes we have we have balked at those treaties and now you know it, it, indigenous communities nations and peoples are saying you know statues of of uh ryerson mackenzie wilfred laurier mcdonald i can go on and on need need to calm down right and now people are like well if you take them down you are erasing history well, if we were to go to the legal, uh, constitutional expectations of this country, then that is uh, uh, um, uh, uh, an ask that should be taken seriously, whether it's municipal, provincial, or federal, because there are treaties that, uh, uh, that we are all bound to, right? We, we are all bound to, and, and that does need to be, it, it, and in my opinion, has always needed to be, we've always had a lot of work and a long way to go on this. Uh, those treaties need to be considered when we interpret our constitutional order, certainly, right? In terms of the discussion about statues, there's, I think, two things need to be appreciated there. One is the difference between... Um, the government and the government's obligation one way or the other that people see, right, to engage in speech. So the Sir John A. Macdonald statue is the city's, right? It was given to the city. It belongs to the city. The city can choose to do what the city wants with it, right? Um, there is a lot of pressure on the city to adopt, you know, one stance or another about that. That in and of itself is not a free speech issue, but it's an issue about, it is, as it were, an issue about speech and expression, right? Certainly, in the case of that, the, the, the example that keeps coming back to me was the protest that wrapped the Sir John A. Macdonald statue in dark cloth and red cord, right? Um, you know, to, to highlight Macdonald's genocide against his treaty partners um, that he traduced to drive off their land. Um, that's history too, right? And that protest, right, is a statement about history. It's an historical statement. And there was quite a reaction to that, including, you know, calls for people to be arrested and so forth, calls for their freedom of speech. That's an expressive... You know, that's an expressive and, and intensely political and artistic act as well, right? That, that's expression, and that's where the calls went initially. A far-right group uh, later took action to take that down. Um, arguably, that's also an expressive act, uh, a little more incoherent, um, a little less artistic, um, equally political, certainly... Um, in my view, one that's a lot less um, salubrious. Um, but, you know, that those also arguably are, you know, acts of expression. Um, but what the city does with the statue is not. But the city is expressing values by leaving the statue up, 
I mm. saw Councillor Nan's call to have, you know, sur you know, to have the McDonald statue taken down. Um, and, you know, that's where we need to consider. It's a prime example of the fact that we all do need to consider, right, what is the outcome of our speech? And what are we, we, we do real things. We can harm real people with the expressions that we make. And certainly um, what indigenous Hamiltonians are saying, and indeed indigenous people across this country, because we're seeing this with McDonald everywhere, is that you know, speech acts that embrace McDonald as a founding spirit of this country are expressing a really, really deeply anti-Indigenous expression. And we need to consider the public value of that. Mm -hmm. right? um, having a discussion about whether we should keep the statue up or take it down is not one about freedom of speech so much as about what kind of speech do we want to engage in as a society? And there's no easy way to avoid those conflicts of values, right? Mm -hmm. There's no easy way to avoid a conflict of value between people who lionize Sir John A. Macdonald and people who recognize his, um, I don't want to call them sins, um, his, you know, historic betrayals and treacheries, the honor of the crown is at stake in many of these discussions and you know we've been grossly wanting for a long time that's a recognition that has to arrive now is what are our values so you know this is the part that i get frustrated with so you know you and i we're we're here on a sunday afternoon having having this discussion but then we say we need to have conversation we need to have discussion we need to talk to people but none of that has happened right like we don't we don't see people actually saying look have you read the davin report the davin report was a report that was commissioned by sir john a mcdonald that was written by mp uh, davin to investigate how residential schools could be applied here in canada I don't know that many people even know that. So then when, when, when people don't want to take a statue down, even the arguments they present are not like, they are not uh, educationally factual, right? So people say, oh, if you take the statue down, you're going to erase history. People will say, oh, but I love my country. Like th that's not what we're talking about. We're saying that, if we are if we're a decent society, somebody that was responsible for uh, uh, the, the 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 murder and abuse of three thousand children, do we want to espouse that value? So, you know, I've never heard any any elected official, all levels, say I want to have a roundtable discussion about this. So when we see them say we should be having discussions, let's have conversations. I'm lost at words because nobody has <laughs> nobody has had that conversation, and we have a truth and reconciliation uh, truth and reconciliation report that was done years. Nobody has done anything. If you look at the the treatment of indigenous peoples in Canada, Turtle Island, nobody has done anything. There are, there are places where people don't have drinking water. So then you you know like. The, again, the application of how we talk about speech and who gets to speak and whose values are presented is also an, an, an even, you know. So that's why sometimes I'm like, you know, we can't, the people living speaking uh, uh, for, right? Like the, 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 I get that you're saying the, the folks that took the, the wrapping down, that's an act of protest. Fine. But the, when protest is not, uh, informed by any uh, 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 factual, contextual, educational, informational information, then 
uh, what what use is it now we're just uh uh, uh yeah most yeah it, it becomes you know um a game around alt right and and all these uh, uh uh behaviors that are not even contributing to the conversation of trying to understand why statues should come down and you said the game of all alt right which i find very interesting because that's a very very perceptive comment on how those values are used and abused by those who want to see them ended right um the the far right spends a lot of time in this country talking about freedom of speech and their freedom to speak right it's not a value that they profess themselves they don't profess a value of freedom of speech much of what they seek to do is to cut off the ability to speak we see this now in the critical race theory um uh, discourse right where you have the far right you know seeking to try to you know eliminate discussion of this within schools within the academy um and you know th that's a th you know that's a direct attack on the ability to speak about historical injustice to speak about our history to speak about um you know to speak about racism within our society that's what people are seeking to eliminate and yet right you will hear from them you know you'll hear from the very same mouths um a, a you know a protest against cancel culture which is again usually just an attack on speech it's an attack on people saying i'm a bad guy they shouldn't be allowed to say i'm a bad guy i'm just saying what's on my mind mm -hmm. but the fact is the value of freedom of speech does mean the need for everyone, of course, to entertain, right, um, the ability for other people to assert, you're a bad guy. Part of what we need to be careful about as a society, right, is that we protect that ability running both ways, to and from power, to and from privilege out from and down on the oppressed because we don't generally do that we protect these values running in one direction we seek to protect elite speech and we seek to criminalize the speech of those who lack the proximity to power and those are the val you know it 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 is only in how the underprivileged use our rights and freedoms that we discover whether or not those rights and freedoms are um, respected or not. And by and large, what we find is we respect these things insufficiently. There isn't enough protection made. Um, I think about the young activists who went to speak to our city council here in Hamilton um, regarding defunding the police. And the reception that they received from counselors was vile and abusive, intensely so, right? And that is, you know, I have a lot of respect for people who are able in the face of that, I've faced it a lot myself, um, <laughs> who are able in the face of that kind of oppressive abuse from, you know, public figures and protected public figures who are able to level these things from their position at city council, knowing that they can't be brought to, um, they can't be brought to account for them. Um, I have a lot of respect for people who are willing to stand up for themselves in the face of that, but that is what people face. You know, young activists came and were roundly abused by city councilors. And, you know, there's just, the, the, there is not there it just goes to show in the insufficient respect that our institutions have for people's ability to speak on you know important public matters we just don't respect it enough yeah and you know shout out to all those all those uh, yes. folks and uh, and residents you know like i think yeah. i think uh, the defund HPS coalition 
has literally mobilized over 4,000 uh, uh, residents in Hamilton to talk about a critical issue, yeah. right? Where they are just asking the question, right? Why do we invest so much in policing when the return on community is negligible? Negligible. That, that's that's <laughs> why is why is performance so bad in the eyes of so many of our communities? Why is performance so bad when we keep pumping more and more and more money into it? Explain. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about things like value for money. And these are very basic and quite conservative values and principles. But to raise them, right, invites, you know, broad and popular condemnation. And let's face it, people are scared. We have seen people thrown in jail in this city by our police for speaking on, you know, community safety issues, right? Um, Cedar Hopperton speaking, you know, and I was at that meeting and, I, and I'm just about sure that you were at that meeting as well. I, okay. I didn't, I did I didn't go to that. You I didn't, didn't go, go to that one. It was, it was yeah. I was there. I was there yeah. and I watched them speak on community self-defense. And, you know, for that political speech at a political meeting she was you know found to have committed a bail violation and thrown into jail for it it was uh, you know unspeakable in the context of what it was and what it was supposed to be and certainly um you know none of their words justified it right um so people are genuinely um and rightly so they feel inhibited from speaking their minds. That's why it's easier in groups. That's why Defund HPS, bringing so many people from the community together, has been so helpful, right? Because speaking out against the, the interests of the police and for the interests of the community um, can be so threatening. To do it in numbers really does help us, mm -hmm. right? And, and I was able to find I think even a bit more of my own voice than usual about those matters because of the fact that when we speak together and we act together, um, it encourages us. But some of the actions for protest there were met with extraordinary calls for violence, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one defund HPS protest, um, uh, your banner on your Twitter account, uh, has the defund the defund the police from that protest, um, and and while that message was being painted, there were calls within this community for people to run the protesters down in their cars and kill them. Mm -hmm. That's extraordinarily disproportionate. Now, again, that speech, right? But that speech, right? That we don't or shouldn't. Now, I shouldn't say don't, because we do protect it, and those people were protected. They were allowed to make those threats. They were allowed to call for deaths like that. That was permitted, right? Yeah. Uh, and, what wasn't and, permitted was for defund the police to stay, you know, painted on the road for more than a few hours. Yeah. That was what was not permitted. Yeah, and if I, if I recall, uh, I believe it was uh, a counselor that also said, uh, any anyone that was involved should be arrested. So it, it it leads me to it leads me to a comment that you made. Um, you said you said that uh, where is it? That I wrote it down. Society runs trolling speech, right? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Because I think I'm gonna get into uh, conspiracy. Uh, 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 narratives but i think you know with the example that you gave about when 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 people that are that have been historically marginalized and oppressed ask critical questions right their speech and their and their actions are are responded to 
in very violent ways. You know, yeah. we have a city here where we could say that, hey, housing, housing is a right. And yet, you know, we have uh, people that just want to live outside. Police and city officials are taking their stuff and throwing it in the garbage. <laughs> in the garbage right, right? so right. can you can you strand all of that for us because you said society runs on controlling speech society runs on controlling speech because you know our speech and communication is so fundamental to everything that we actually do right so i don't want it to sound conspiratorial because in fact it it it, it makes a lot of sense right Capitalism, like it or leave it, is, you know, market capitalism is the economic structure that we work within in this society. And, you know, market capitalism requires discipline of speech at many levels, right? In terms of capital raising, like I was talking about earlier, right? Um, we depend for the functioning of our capital markets on restrictions on speech. You can't just, you, you know, you can't lie about it. And restrictions on lies are restrictions about speech. Um, the uh, ability to, uh, you know, run a business depends on, you know, making sure that you can prevent an employee, for example, um, from telling the customers, you know, whatever's on their mind about the product. Um, you have a right, you know, like it or not, you have a right to expect if you're paying someone um, that you can control their speech about it while they're there at work, right? But can you control their speech about it while they're not at work? Well, that's a different value. And there we have different limits. Can you prevent them from, you know, blowing the whistle on something you're doing illegally? Well, no, you can't, right? But the, the gradations from that are not always obvious. And so, yeah, in many ways, you know, the, the, the control of speech, and, and certainly we're always controlling our own speech, right? You and I are doing it, you, you know, you and I are doing it right now. I'm trying not to swear on your live stream, right? I mean, I'm doing, my, you know, I'm doing my very best not to, right? And, and that's, again, that's control of speech. Um, we all run on that because what we communicate is critical and the form and style of our communications, right? is fundamental to that you know what we are communicating the need to communicate our thoughts ideas intentions um our uh you know our, our uh um, you know w what our intentions are these things are really important so it, it does depend on controlling speech then when you link it you wanted to link it to something else sorry yeah but before you do that i just had one thought but yeah uh so maybe let me qualify that statement so you said society runs on controlled speech so now my question would be if we were to run a society based on controlled speech that is situated in humanity right, right? because you are not you, you are not swearing on the show because maybe there might be a 10 year old that wants to watch this show yeah. right to yeah. to learn about uh freedom of speech so we are not we are not swearing because it limits, uh, in inverted comments, it limits our, our expression of, of speech is because we care and are, are, are responsible about our collective connections, right? right. I don't know a 10-year-old or a 15-year-old or a 6-year-old that wants to learn about freedom of speech, but if they find this on the internet, which is also freedom of speech, you're allowed to put right. anything you want, right? Yeah. But when in basic humanity opposed to centering it on a active capitalist world then maybe that's the difference right? so if you can yeah comment on that and your thoughts sorry it, it no it's fine it's exactly the point that i'm making right which is that ultimately what we want to do is to limit as far as we can right the degree to which we, we what we're looking to limit right is the degree to which constructive speech that builds our relationship with other people right we want to limit the control of that as far as possible from outside right and so 
this is why that point that I make quite often, which is we cannot free speech until we free the people to speak is so important, right? The ability to, to, the ability to lead a free life without control, right? Without undue um, influence by other people is an incredibly important value. That's a basic value of freedom that goes even beyond our freedoms of thought and conscience, our freedoms of religion, our freedoms of speech and expression, um, it, 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 our freedom of association. It goes deeper than all of that. It's the freedom to be ourselves, right? And that freedom to be ourselves is the one that we have to free. But that involves freedom in areas that we often don't think about right? Mm -hmm. Economically freeing people, socially freeing people. And, you know, in that light, that right to be yourself, one thing that's been happening recently that, that I think of is the examples that you've been raising about the treatment of LGD, L, LGBTQ people in Ghana, right? And, and the government, what the government's done there, we've put 21 activists in prison, Right. What the government's done there is very interesting because it, it, it attacks their, it, what's been attacked is their speech. Right. Um, they were arrested at a meeting. And what the government said after was that, right, there was, at, there was uh, pamphlets, books, and other material, right, that was advocating for the rights of LGBTQ people and right that they were planning to do advocacy they were planning to speak mm -hmm. right and this is where the right of people lgbtq people like myself right um here and worldwide the freedom to be ourselves depends on a freedom to speak right and so often it is that speech, it is making others aware of our existence that causes the backlash, that causes the state to say, well, we can no longer allow this. We can allow you to exist when you don't let anyone know that you exist. But the instant that you try to enter society, right, as yourselves, as truly yourselves, and therefore able to speak your truth, that, that's what we want to shut down. And so we see that that freedom to be ourselves, that most fundamental freedom inside of us, right? The freedom to be me is often mediated through attacks on our speech. Thank you for yeah. putting the link in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, um, you know, and, and, and this is why I, I think this is why we have this, 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 uh, this segment here to make the connections, right? Because sometimes we talk about things in silos and we don't make the connections. One thing that I, 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 I would like for you to comment on because you've raised this, right? We've seen that, you know, you did mention the uh, uh, the right to uh, practice religion, right? Right. Um, so, you know, how, how, how do we get to a point where we can truly understand. We can truly understand how our rights are connected to other people's rights. You know, because I, I I believe anyone should be able to practice their religion. So anyone is practicing their religion, and now they go and infringe on an on on a group, and they don't see that right then this is the situation that we're in and how do we get to a point so that people can understand that uh two plus lgbtqia plus rights is 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 entwined with any other rights that we have that we have it is a difficult question because religion does mean different things in different contexts to different people, right? Um, I, I think that it, it, it's, it, it is not actually that difficult, right, to protect 
people's rights to be themselves and others' right to free religion in a circumstance where we see religion as a personal relationship to God, right? Or a personal relationship to a, a set of spiritual values. But where the, that set of spiritual values teaches and preaches to you, right, to go out and build a moral world or a world that coheres with a certain moral framework or point of view, that's where we come into conflict. And that is where I think liberal rights, and, and for, for all of that, as a socialist, I am not necessarily the world's greatest respecter of liberal rights. Nevertheless, right? Those, those, that liberal framework does protect those values very well by moving a lot of our conflict into the world of speech, right? Um, to say that, you know, you have the right to proselytize, um, you have the right to call out sin, for example. Uh, and I think of the street corner preachers here in Hamilton just as much as I think of, um, you know, the, the, the communal violence that's meted out um, in, sadly in God's name, right, in a place like Ghana, a place like Jamaica, um, a place... Uh, like uh, Myanmar, for example, um, you know, against people for simply being, you know, who they are, right? Um, that's where those liberal values and the idea that, right, we we solve conflicts of rights by trying to protect certain fundamental values that protect everyone, right? These idea of universal human rights that seems to be the framework that works right mm -hmm. and that's why the rights revolution since 1945 you know in the coming of the universal declaration of human rights um that's why it's been so powerful that's why there's been so much fundamental change one of the reasons why there's been so much fundamental change in the world uh in that period since then is this recognition that this rights order that tries to solve clashes of rights by protecting everyone universally um, has been, you know, so so effective and powerful. I can't deny that it works. And that's why I can't deny that, you know, our constitutional order that's still developing has the potential to work. I, I think it does. It's just, we're not there yet in terms of protecting pe people equally. Mm -hmm. So, you know, then how how, how do we, how how do we get there? How <laughs> how do we get there? Am I? I think we're stopped again. Did, oh no no we're not. I can. Oh okay. Oh Sorry. we. I, I lost you there yeah. for a minute. I think yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was I was saying I have to move. So again. then how okay. <laughs> it's it's okay. <laughs> um so then how do we okay are you to No, we're good. I'm okay. Oh okay. So then how do we get there? How do we get to a point? How do we get to a point where we can we can truly, truly, truly um you know practice freedom of speech in a way that 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 is undergirded by our collective sense of humanity we have to speak um you have to use we we, we tell our children one of the things that we tell our children when they're young when they're kindergartners is use your words right don't don't lash out and act against somebody else but use your words talk it out um and, you know, in sports, we say that on the field, right? To be effective as a team, right? Talk it up out there. Um, I think that's the value. I think the value is to speak, right? To do what we're doing now, to have a conversation. Um, 
that, that's hard to do sometimes, right? It's, it's, it, 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 we often want to shy away from the difficult conversation. We want to shy away from conversing at all, right? Um, we want to watch the TV. We don't want to talk on it. Um, but if we are able to talk out those conflicts, what we find is we find ways more often than the converse of resolving them, right? But that does take good faith and it, it takes the bravery to speak, right? And you have to free yourself to speak. Um, we've all got to participate and, and, and that's the value, right? And, and that's what we need to protect. We need to speak out to protect the rights of others to speak back to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's the way to do it. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's good. Um, can you, I know we, we have about 10, 10 minutes yeah. or so. So if, can you tell people uh, what kind of law you practice and, you know, uh, <laughs> and, and, and uh, how they can get in touch with you, some of the things you're working on in Hamilton, you know, uh, we did sure. it, we did it, 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 we, we always want people to, every, everybody that comes on this show at the end, we ask them, you know, uh, what they're doing so that other people that are watching can get in yep. touch with you in some way or form. Professionally, I'm a tax lawyer, unless you have an issue with tax, right? Um, you don't, you know, you don't need to get in touch with me. Um, in the community, um, my activism right now is much of it is around a couple of things. One is um, that I'm, you know, working with a group called I Elect Hamilton. Um, and, you know, we're looking to try to, again, this is, it's very, it, it's very speech oriented, right? We, we are looking to try to encourage public participation in our political process, including our elections, right? Um, and we have a real focus on elections, wanting to encourage people to come forward and um, participate, not necessarily as candidates, right? But as, you know, uh, participants in a public conversation around our government or around our, our city government um and and that's been you know that's been recent and really enjoyable the other thing i'm working on is again something of a, a speech and knowledge issue and uh, i'll be releasing something later today on my twitter account um my latest call for governments um because i'm working on calling on governments to investigate the genocide um, that appears to have occurred here in Canada. Um, you mentioned the Truth and Reconciliation Commission earlier. When the TRC reported, um, one of the things that unfortunately the commission wasn't able to investigate, um, they didn't have time or money to do so, um, and the government declined to give them the greater mandate, was to look at the question about, legally speaking, whether a genocide had occurred here in Canada. It's a tremendously important question and something that the government and all governments in this country have a treaty right, like an international treaty obligation to investigate. There seems to be plenty of evidence now that this is a worthy matter to investigate. And so every year on Canada Day or around Canada Day, I didn't quite make it for July 1st this year, I write to the provincial and territorial and federal ministers of justice and I call on them and their departments to engage what needs to be done to investigate this extremely pressing question. Because if a genocide has occurred here, then there needs to be, again, there is an international treaty obligation um, to bring, as far as possible, charges about those things. Um, it's an aspect of question of you know Canada's treatment of its indigenous communities that share its territory it's an aspect that that has not been properly ever looked at and we've got plenty of hints it's time to go the full mile and mm -hmm. I think you know again this is something that can't be shrunk away from um, it is not something that's optional it's mandatory 
and governments need to be encouraged to take up that mantle and say, we will do it. We will look at this question and we'll look at whether genocide occurred here. Um, and so you'll be really, you you be sharing that on your Twitter? Yeah, I'll be releasing my latest letter and people and 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 you know advice for how people can make their voices heard about that about okay. that issue too. All right. So uh, anything else? I'm private too, so you'll have to ask. I forgot. I'm private on Twitter. You'll have to ask to follow me. But don't worry, you can ask to follow me, and I'll say yes. Yeah. So we we just shared it with uh, with thank folks. Thank you. I saw. So, yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this this discussion was uh, an interesting one. Uh, Sorry so, about the technical difficulties. No. 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 I think I think sometimes no. I think sometimes it's important for folks to hear this because we use some of these words without even understanding what it means. Right. Everybody shouts freedom of speech. Everybody shouts. Right. Uh, it's yeah. in the constitution, it's da, da da da, but they don't know the actual um the meaning of it, how it applies, what the limits are, what they're not, and all of that. So um hopefully this discussion has started to pique pique uh people's interest. Maybe it's answered a couple of questions or more questions, and they can reach out to you or do their own research. So yeah, um, yeah thank you, thank you very, very well, thank much. You, Kojo yeah and um for those that are watching next week we're taking a break <laughs> so uh we will be back on the on the 18th and uh i will i will release um our poster probably next week so just stay I'll tuned be watching. <laughs> yeah so thank just you so much for having me yeah no problem it was great to have you on so thank you everyone for tuning in and uh we'll see you in two weeks enjoy see your you. sunday you <laughs> yeah so everyone thanks for tuning in uh, uh big shout outs to craig uh, for joining us and giving us a rundown of uh, freedom beach um yeah so we'll see you we'll see you in two weeks if you missed this you can always check it out page you can also we'll be uploading uh the video on my youtube uh channel uh kojo easy Tamte. you can check it out uh you can check it out there and um yeah we'll 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 see you next week Hope you enjoyed this uh, this episode, and uh, you know you're listening to the communal where we have uh, conversations, make connections, and build community. Stay safe, stay well, and uh, we'll see you soon.